Welcome back to Peer Guided DBT Lessons, provided by DBT Skills Application, Peers Helping Peers. This week's lesson, marked 1-2 in our Mindfulness module, we'll be looking at what skills. Please keep in mind that we're simply peers helping peers working together to bring about more peaceful, constructive, and ultimately happier lives. In other words, a life worth living. So what are the what skills of mindfulness DBT skills? It is simply what is done to be mindful. We observe, we describe, and we participate. So let's start off with the observe skill. To observe is to simply notice the experience without getting caught up in it. Notice without reacting to your experience. Observe with a Teflon mind, allowing experiences, sensations, thoughts, and feelings to come into your mind, but slip right back out. Keep control of the direction of your attention, but not what you see. Don't try to push anything you observe away. Don't attempt to hold on to an experience. Remain alert to every sensation, thought, feeling, or action that enters your mind. Pay close attention to your five senses, thoughts, emotions, and actions. Sensations. Pay close attention to the input you receive from all five senses. What do you see, hear, smell, feel, or taste? Next we have thoughts. Pay attention to your thoughts. Simply notice the thought you are having. Be aware that it is there before you. Don't add anything to it. Don't judge it. Don't try to change it. and Don't react to it. Remain alert to everything that enters your experience. You may notice thoughts drifting into your mind. Allow your thoughts to come and go, as they all will. Compare your thoughts to clouds in the sky. They drift into sight, but drift right back out of sight again. Step inside yourself and simply observe. Watch your thoughts coming and going like clouds in the sky. Notice that they float into your mind, but also float by if we do not try to hold them. Thoughts coming and going could also be compared to a twig drifting past on a river. Take care not to let your attention get caught in the current and drift off too. If you notice your attention drifting away, just observe that it is and gently guide it back in the direction you are purposely attending to. Remember, you are the director of your attention. Observing our thoughts in this manner can help us to be more objective about our thoughts. When we're not being observant, we tend to feel enslaved to any thought that enters our mind at any time. Through the observed skill, it becomes clear to us that there is a difference between our thoughts and ourselves. Thoughts come and go while we, ourselves, can remain fully present in the moment. We are still managers of our attention in those quiet places between thoughts. We are not our thoughts. Therefore, we don't need our thoughts to control our mindsets or actions. When we realize that we have the power to control our attention as we observe thoughts without reactions or attachments, we are learning that we have power over our thoughts. We can then see that we have the ability to let go of thoughts that serve no beneficial purpose for us. Now let's take a look at emotions. 
Remain alert to everything that enters your experience. Observe your emotional state. Simply notice what you are feeling. When you are observing emotions, keep a little space between yourself and your emotion. Simply be aware that the emotion is part of your experience without judging it or attempting to change it. Don't attempt to push your emotion away, even if it causes you discomfort or pain. Don't try to cling to the emotion, even if it's enjoyable or pleasant. Just observe that it is present. Mindfulness is simply being aware of what is happening right now without wishing it were different, enjoying the pleasant without holding on when it changes, which it will. Being with the unpleasant without fearing it will always be this way, which it won't. James Barras Avoid reacting to the emotion. Just notice what you are experiencing without getting caught up in it. Simply let your emotions come and go. All emotions will change in intensity and all emotions will pass. Pay attention to your feeling as it rises and falls like ocean waves. Now let's look at the describe skill. Observe is just paying attention. It is noticing without adding anything to it. Describe is putting words to what you observe, sensation, thought, or emotion. You can either express those words by speaking aloud to another person or by writing them down, but describe means that you put those words into communication, not just thought. The hard part of the describe skill is to stick to the facts without adding your own commentary. Describe the who, what, when, and where facts of what observed. When you describe, you will want to define or label what you're describing. A sensation is just a sensation. A thought is just a thought. An emotion is just an emotion. An action is just an action, without adding your personal assumptions, interpretations, opinions, concepts, judgments, or value labels. Next, let's take a look at the physical sensations. Describing something outside of yourself without adding commentary is easier than describing thoughts or emotions impartially. A ball, for example, for most people is simply a ball and is rarely judged as good or bad or interpreted as anything but a ball. This can be a good starting point for many who are not used to observing or describing. Keep it descriptive and simple. Describing the physical sensations, or the five senses, is pretty straightforward when describing those stimulated by something outside of yourself. If we go back to the example of the ball, we could describe it as cool or warm to the touch, smooth or rough, small or large, or any variation of these. We could also describe the color. Describing physical sensations from within our own bodies is a little trickier for some, but still fairly easy to describe without feeling a need to add to the sensation description. For example, you could say, I just became aware that I'm hungry. Another example in describing physical sensations might be, my chest feels tight and my heart is racing. Or, my hands feel clammy and shaky. Or, another example might be, my neck feels tense. Whatever the sensation is, it is important that you put it into words, 
Paying attention to what our body is feeling is needed for other DBT skills too. Next is thoughts. This is where things get a little harder. Don't get caught up with your thoughts or engage with the thought content. Remember, a thought is just a thought. You are not the thought. The thought is not you. Thinking a thought does not make it true. Simply label it as a thought. I am having a thought about fill in the blank. Some examples of this could be, the thought that I will be unable to do this has just wandered into my mind. A self-judgmental thought entered my mind. I thought to remind myself to stay in the moment. I noticed the thought that when I get anxious, my heart beats faster. Don't judge the thought or judge yourself for having that thought. Just acknowledge that it happened. If a specific thought causes a sensation to be felt, be sure to note that too. For example, when I had a thought about, and then you fill in the blank, I noticed that I became short of breath. I felt tension in my neck. I noticed pain in my stomach. We are able to be mindful of how certain thoughts make us feel without getting caught up in those thoughts, without judging that thought, and without giving the thought any particular value. Next we have emotions. This one can be quite difficult, especially if you were taught as a child to ignore your emotions or were belittled for putting them into words. You may have trouble describing feelings without adding a judgment to your description, but avoid being judgmental. Label it for what it is. An emotion is just an emotion. It is neither good nor bad. It just is. Don't get tangled up in the content of the emotion. Describe what is happening. Put your experience into words. If this feels unnatural, then describe that. I am feeling awkward describing my feelings. I am feeling self-conscious right now. If you're feeling frustrated, describe that too. I am feeling frustrated because I am having trouble describing since my thoughts seem to be coming and going so rapidly. Put a name to your emotion. Describing emotions with a label, this is an emotion, helps us to separate the experience of the emotion from the reality of the situation. A feeling is just a feeling, and no matter how strongly I feel it, a feeling is not fact. If I feel like I am worthless, that does not mean I am worthless. The describe skill helps you avoid jumping to conclusions that make you feel badly about yourself. It is a great tool to keep you from mistaking feelings as reality. Next we have participate. Participating means that you enter into the experience throwing yourself into it a hundred percent. It is being fully engaged in whatever you are doing in that moment. Let yourself become one with your experience, being a part of whatever is happening. Let go of the past and the future and be only in the present. Don't overthink or second guess how you participate, simply do it. Avoid questioning how well you are practicing the mindfulness skills. If you notice your mind is wandering off, getting caught up in thoughts and emotions, or resisting your chosen direction of attention, gently engage in the act of refocusing the mind. Participation is about throwing yourself into the moment and whatever is occurring in the moment. That means if you are in a daze and disconnected from your present environment, you will need to shift gears. You will need to really focus on what is going on around you in the now. For as long as you're focused on participation, 
you'll need to let go of your ruminating or worry and be in the here and now. With practice, you will find that you're able to participate in your own life and in your own experiences. This skill is about going with the flow of your life and events as they occur. While you move with the events and emotions as they come, be sure to not let their flow carry you away. Don't get tangled in the thoughts and emotions. Just acknowledge them. You could practice shifting gears to focus on the present moment. Become present in the now and the current situation. Notice how you feel when you're attempting to connect with the moment. Observe how it feels to try to participate in, be a part of, and engage yourself in the present. Then perhaps you can shift gears to return to your worry and stress. Notice how it feels to ruminate, worry, and feel emotional stress. Participating is not about how well you are doing what you are doing. It is about how much you are engaged with the experience. Permit yourself to be a part of what is occurring without worrying about every detail. Practice becoming less self-conscious by letting go of the considerations, how do I look? Or am I doing this right? Let go of judgments, whether they are self-judgments or the judgments of others. Children at play are very accomplished at participating. They thoroughly immerse themselves in the moment and the activity at hand. They can throw themselves into the experience without fear, judgment, self-consciousness, or inhibitions. Being self-conscious and self-critical separates you from your experience. Let go and go with the flow. Engage with spontaneity. Through mindfulness, you can learn to fully participate in every experience without consideration to how enjoyable the experience is. The participate skill can be practiced even during those humdrum everyday activities, such as washing the dishes, for example. The more senses involved in any activity, the easier it is to focus in on it mindfully. When washing dishes, you can hear the water running. You can smell the dish soap, you can see the soap suds, and you can feel the wetness and temperature of the water. You can pay attention to the texture of the dishcloth and notice how it feels against the dish you are washing. No matter what the activity is, engage fully in the experience for whatever it brings you. Whatever you do, be present in the moment and engaged. The key to this, or to any new skill, is practice. The great thing about mindfulness is that it's nice to do. It can take as little or as much time as you like, and it brings a sense of peace, a clearer head, and a greater focus. So, practice, practice, practice. Be sure to check the video description in the comments below. You'll find a link to the website lesson that accompanies this video. You will also find links to the handouts and worksheets created to complement this video. And while you're there, if you found this video helpful, be sure to like it. Next week in our Peer Guided DBT Lessons Mindfulness Module, we will be looking at How Skills Part 1. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel where our entire DBT course is now available. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you next week.